Uh, President um, Kappa, uh, ladies and gentlemen, excellencies, I hope all protocol has been observed. I'll be very brief, um, and I'll try to underline three very simple theses to get the debate uh, going today from what I just heard. My general observation is that uh, President Makapa's speech to me was music. Uh, I mean, I think it was a phenomenal analysis of uh, where Africa stands, where the opportunities are, and where the challenges are. And to be quite honest, uh, ideologically and otherwise, uh, I would argue at least from a personal perspective, uh, smack on. Now, the three points I wanted to make is that, first of all, I think Africa, and especially Tanzania, needs to pitch and brand itself in a new way. That will be my first argument. Second, I will make a case for what I call a dignified foreign policy and argue that Europe does not, at this particular moment, drive a dignified foreign policy. And thirdly, I'll try to make an argument that the EU should change its course and attitude uh, with Africa, and more specifically with Tanzania. Now, first point then is to pitch Africa or to pitch Tanzania or to brand both of them. I really like the title of this seminar, and if you read it very carefully, and if you look at the work that Heidi and myself are trying to do here in our capacity as Minister for International Development and Minister for International Trade, it's exactly really what we are here to do. And if we were to give you one thesis today is to try to say that I think we've come to a new stage in our relationship. We're moving away from aid dependency, aid focus, more towards trade uh, and business focus. And I really, really welcome this. Now, the way in which I would like to see Africa and Tanzania is the fastest growing economy in the world. This is the mindset and the change that needs to happen in Europe, in the United States, and why not in Asia as well. I've read a book called The Next Billion. I think a wonderful statement of where we're really going. But this isn't something that has penetrated European or Western minds yet. There's still this very old-fashioned aid, aid mentality that we so often see in Europe. Now, someone mentioned the term BRICS. I want Tanzania to be defined as one of the new BRICS in this world. And it's very important to do this. We need someone to do a study, much like Jim O'Neill did for Goldman Sachs when he was the chief economist on the BRICS, saying that, yeah, listen, Brazil, Russia, India, China, that's where growth is. Now, what does he do next? He says, no. Now it's the MITs, Mexico, Indonesia, Turkey, and South Korea. Someone needs to do the same thing, I think, for, Af for Africa. And what we need to see there is Tanzania as one of the T's of whichever <laughs> abbreviation comes out. This is about branding. Why am I saying this? Because I think we stand in an absurd situation right now. I'll just give you two figures comparing the European Union and Africa. The European Union has 27 member states and a population of approximately 500 million people. That's 7% of the world population. And at the same time, it is by far the largest economy in the world, 25%. Compare that to the US, 20 or China, 10. Africa has a population of 1 billion, a little bit more. The African Union has 54 member states, so half of, or double of what the European Union has. And its population stands for approximately 14% of the world population. But its economy is no more than 1.5% of the world economy. The potential is tremendous, and this is something that needs to be driven into the brains of uh, Americans, into the brains of Asians, and into the brains of Europeans. That's point number one. Now, point number two is to think, well, is this guy standing here some kind of an exploitative capitalist saying, yeah, let's do it? No. My point number two is a concept which I tried to develop a few years ago, which I call a dignified 
foreign policy or DFP. Everyone understands the word dignity and everyone honors the notion of dignity. It's a value which all of us, I would argue, behold. My thesis here is that EU foreign policy, US foreign policy is not dignified. It is very often paternalistic. It is moralistic. It is preaching. It is a monologue. It is not a dialogue. We need to change that. And I think I can say that because I come, of course, from a country without any political luggage. I don't have a colonial past. Well, actually, Sweden was a part of Finland. Really. <laughs> and it was Russia that was a grand autonomous part of Finland. But uh, other than that, we're not uh, bad uh, colonialists. But what I call for is not a paternalistic approach, but a partnership approach. And this is something that needs to be done. And, and just like President Makapa said, I mean, what happens is that when you move away from aid, use all the instruments that are there, and go towards trade, this is exactly what happened. I mean, I loved it, Mr. President, when you talked about that aid decline is good, it increases independence and actually promotes dignity. That, that, that's what you said. And that's exactly the mentality, I think, that people need to have uh, in Europe uh, as well. And then finally and thirdly, we come to the issue of the European Union and Tanzania specifically, or the European Union and Africa uh, more uh, generally. My thinking is that we need to do something together. Now, the EPA is, of course, a big issue, as we've seen it here so much. I'll be the first one to admit I'm an avid free trader. I really believe that the recipe for a successful society is based on two pillars. One of them is a social market economy linked with competition and free trade. And the other one is liberal democracy and freedom. I think if you look at all functioning societies in the world right now, you could argue that those two ingredients work. Yes, there are other examples of growth which seem to be working quite well as well, but I'm not convinced that it's <laughs> They, they have the best, best uh, societal models. I'm also the first one to admit that I don't think that Europe is a fair trader. I do not personally think it's right when we in Europe say that, yes, we'll give you aid as long as you don't, and get this, subsidize your own agriculture. I mean, look who is talking. <coughs> yes, our agriculture is very strong, but it is completely based on subsidies. That's the only way in which we survive in it. Now, when I talk about free trade, I don't talk about the EPA being inflicted and pushed upon through the WTO measurements and everything being opened up immediately. But I talk about a step-by-step -step process because I firmly believe that the protectionist measures that we use in Europe are damaging to investment and the driving of business uh, here in Africa. So it needs to be a two-way street. Yes. A lot of European countries have a head start. Not all of them, by the way. There are countries such as, for instance, Botswana, which has a higher GDP per capita than some in Africa. And, and, uh, and I think it was uh, Dr. Kaur who mentioned it in, in a couple of the questions. It's funny, by the way, that we have a debate of extremes right now. Here we've been talking about north-south. When I hear north-south in the middle of the euro crisis, <laughs> you know, I think Nordic countries, Germany, the Netherlands, uh, Finland and then southern countries in the European <laughs> Union. That's the automatic link. And in that extreme, we have exactly the same debate. It's austerity versus growth, right? So it's sort of, you know, Adam Smith versus Keynes, you know, or Olli Re Commissioner Olli Rehn versus, God forbid, Krugman, you know. <laughs> you know so we, we have exactly the same. Now, our argument from the Finnish perspective, much like Heidi outlined, is that you, you can't go through these extremes. You actually need both. So you need sometimes state intervention. You need sometimes stimulation. You need sometimes government control. And I guess I have to say this because I'm here promoting Finnish business as a representative of Finnish government. And on the other side, you need the markets. Because let's not kid ourselves. It's not us government officials that create growth. It's you, business, that do it. Thank you very much.